all welcome to our youth service this morning. The Lord bless you. Thank you very much for coming. I um, want to extend a very warm welcome to our internet audience. Um, you're joining us here at our youth camp in um, Whitemore Lakes at Litchfield. This is um, what we, a program we organize every year for our young people where we have a time to reflect, think about God, talk to God, and build our relationship with the Lord. So you are very welcome for joining us. The Lord bless you. And um, we're going to continue on with the service. And we're going to sing a few songs uh, to give the Lord glory for what he has done. He's given us a very bright and beautiful morning. You can see the sun shining. And um, I believe we're all going to sing lively and heartily. As the sun is outside, the sun's going to shine in our hearts as well. So we'll start our song by singing, uh, We Bring the Sacrifice of Praise. So we're going to take this chorus through twice. We bring the sacrifices of praise. song is he is exalted the king is exalted so we're going to take that chorus through as well twice through after the introduction <laughs> song is our God reigns 
and he does reign on high. So we're going to um, sing that song through as well. We're singing a few more praises unto the Lord, our God reign. How lovely are the mountains, are the feet of him who bring good news. And Jesus Christ is good news. next song is how can I say thanks to the Lord for what he has done for us we'll take um, that song through and then we'll have one more song before congregational prayers
prepare me to be a sanctuary. We're going to take this chorus three times through. We'll sing it once seated, then we'll sing it twice standing, and after which we shall be led in congregational prayer. Lord, prepare me to be a sanctuary. Heavenly Father, our most precious Lord, we thank you, Father, for a time like this. Oh, how sweet it is for brethren to gather in unity. We thank you, Father, for giving us an opportunity like this to be a part of you. Glory be to your name. Amen. We thank you, Father, for the shed blood on Calvary. Yes. That we might go back to basics. That we might be found of you. Lord, accept our thanks. The Bible says, oh, that they are wise. That they understood these things. For they shall consider their latter end. Thank you Lord for counting us among the wise. We were lost. But you found us. We were dead. But you brought us back to life. But adventure oh Lord. You still have one or two or three. Oh, at the foot of the cross is a level ground. Save today. Amen. Jesus, save today. Amen. You are still doing that work of salvation. Today, Lord, is not an exception. Heavenly Father, we are committing our souls unto your hands. Take us back to basics. Amen. Take us back to basics. Amen. Remind us of the things that we once knew. Touch our souls tonight. Amen. We commit this service into your hands. Minister grace. Amen. At the end of today, oh Lord, we want to look back and say, yes, indeed, have you helped us. Glory be to your name. Amen. For in Jesus' name we pray. the heart. 
for some years, Stella and I have not been coming to the youth camp. Um, we've always enjoyed every time we have come, but um, we just decided that um, perhaps as um, I'm getting older, maybe we should um, be stepping back little by little. But this year in particular, we decided that we will come again to be with the young people for my ordination anniversary. Perhaps it's just about this time, 17 years ago this day, 30th of April 2000, when the ministers and um, the elders of our church lay hands on me and ordained me as the pastor to take over from the pioneer of this work. And I want to take the opportunity to say 
a very big thank you to everyone, perhaps beginning with the young people. The youth ministry has been a tremendous support and help to this ministry, at least for the past 17 years now. It has been wonderful. There has never been any occasion of regret whatsoever. So I want to say thank you for your support. Thank you for your understanding. Thank you for playing your part. And I pray that may the good Lord of heaven reward you all with heaven. Amen. I cannot forget also the entire ministry, the ministers, the different categories of workers that have worked with me for the past 17 years. We have never had any occasion of fighting. That doesn't mean that we don't have disagreements. It doesn't mean that we don't have differences. But whenever that happens, we have always come together to resolve that amicably with the Spirit of God present in our midst. And I want to appreciate all of them as well. Of course, I cannot forget my dear wife who has given me a great support all throughout this time of 17 years of service. May the Lord bless her too. Amen. Perhaps I just thought that um, I can say something about the testimony of my life that may be of help to maybe one individual here present today, or more than one, as I've prayed that the Lord will use it. I was talking about 17 years ago today. Prior to that time, of course, God gave me the opportunity to be in a meeting like this. That was on Sunday, the 1st of December, 1974. Perhaps some of you are not born then, I guess. I had the opportunity to sit down in a meeting like this to hear the good news. And I thank God that my mind, my heart, glued to that word that I heard. And I decided that I'm going to give it a go. I did that. You know, um, just before this meeting, Olos and I had a chat about these are altar benches or altar chairs as we have here. During that kind of a meeting of young people like this, we had opportunity to come to the front to pray. I did pray and nothing happened, and I left the service. But I thank God for the conviction that gripped my heart. At the end of that service, I prayed I didn't get anything, but I, again, I went to the back of one of the classrooms at my campus at the time. I knelt down there. I confessed my sins to God. Heaven came down. The Lord saved my soul. I was in the other class this morning, I think is, um, um, was it Ade um, that was contributing in that class when the teacher was asking about born again or salvation, what do they understand by it? And he made a point of a big difference, a true difference, a real difference between a life of sin and a life that is changed, a life that is saved. God did that for me. My life was changed. And I knew the work was done. Before then, of course, many times you will make many resolutions that you don't want to do this, you don't want to do that. But before long, you find yourself doing the same thing over and over. But it wasn't a question of resolution this time around. It's a question of the Spirit of God coming down to take away from me all the desire to sin and give me the power to go and sin no more. That was the beginning of my journey and it was real. As a young person, perhaps you may have issues in your life. Maybe your parents are not so rich and they cannot afford so much for you. I want to encourage you that the Lord has a plan for your life. I couldn't go to secondary school. My parents were so poor, they could not afford to send me to secondary school. 
I went to a lower secondary school after my primary education. And from there, when there wasn't any money to train me, I went to a trade center to go and learn some building trades. And I became a specialist in plumbing. So I became a plumber. But right there at that trade center, that is where God saved my soul. Amen. And from there on, it has been a different thing entirely. I can tell you that it has been from one level of success to another. Amen. It has been from one level of victory to another. Amen. I don't want to take you through all the gaps in between, but I can tell you that when God saves, he keeps Amen. and he provides. Amen. How can it be that someone that the parents could not afford to send to secondary school can now afford without any bursary or any um, scholarship, can now afford to leave Nigeria, go to Manchester University for master's degree, left Manchester for University of Kent for PhD, and then became an associate professor. That to me is what the Lord can do. Yeah. And the Lord did that for me. Amen. I was really looking forward to become a full professor. That was all my aim. But as I said, 17 years ago, I was just at the tail end of that as a principal lecturer at the business school at the University of South Wales when this call came that um, I would be appointed to take over the pastorship of AFM UK. I thank God that the Lord blessed me with um, uh, agreement to do so. I, I decided, I, I made up my mind that that I would do. Amen. And I know the Lord is able to take care of the rest. Yeah. And I can testify today that the Lord has been faithful. Yeah. It is true, today I'm not called a professor. I stopped at doctorate. But today they call me pastor. And I don't want you to call me pastor. I think you know the reason why. I love being called Brother Isaac. But the reason I'm using the word pastor is that one of the professors told me that, are you sure you want to go and become a pastor and you leave all this behind? And I said, I'm sure. Even though there wasn't anything to being a pastor, as far as I could see, as far as I can understand, but I can tell you that um, there is everything to it. There is every enjoyment to it. There is every uh, uh, life and favor from God to it. You want to ask me as young people, how did you make it? I can tell you I didn't make anything. God made it for me. Amen. You want to ask me as a young person, didn't you have occasion of other young people that you can follow? Yes, I had. I had occasions of many young people that would like to do something different from what we are taught. I had occasions of many young people that like to question what we are taught. I had occasion of many young people that would like to um, modernize what we are taught. But I decided within me that I'm going to take a stand. And this is not going to be between me and someone else. Is going to be between me and God. When we make decisions like that, God sees that from heaven. He honors that. And he does something wonderful with such a life. That is what the Lord has done for me. I like to say that um, from time to time, I like to ask myself the question, how can I, as opposed to how can we? The problem many people have, and which when I was growing up, I had as well, and God helped me as to do with what others are doing that I too want to copy. But I decided the question is, how can I do this against God, sin against God, rather than look at anybody? God is looking down, and I'm sure we have some young people in our midst that are looking up to God, and their question always is, how can I? It has got nothing to do with how can we. 
because this is something personal. I said 43 years ago this happened to me. I'm looking forward to retire very, 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 very soon. Should Jesus tarry, I mention that from time to time. I do, and I mean it. And I'm looking forward to when God will give me the opportunity of saying or recommending someone among these young people who will be like 40-something years old or 30-something years old to be the next district superintendent. The Lord is looking down, and I'm sure it's going to happen. Amen. It's a matter of the heart. It has got nothing to do with how we look or what we do. But God is looking down. Perhaps a word of caution and advice again would be, and that can be a lady. I'm not talking of a man or a woman. Amen. Amen. I see some ladies here trying to say something to each other. Well, it can be a lady. After all, a lady started our church. So why can't we have the next? I've never heard of any lady district superintendent. We can have the first one in Western Europe. Yeah. And the Lord is able to do that. So I'm not in any way separating anybody here. It can be you, just as it can, just as it can be anyone else. Well, um, just a word of caution. You don't know what God has uh, uh, in place in future for you and that is why every step you take you are very careful I know I was told in our church to pray when it comes to getting married I got married in 1987 and I didn't know what the Lord has in store for me I wasn't planning to become a pastor but I was praying for a godly lady. Someone that will not be difficult to align with, thus saith the Lord. Someone that I will not need to be begging, coercing, to please align with the church policy. God did that for me. Amen. And little did I know that God was preparing me for a time that I will have all the support that I can get in order to make my ministry, the ministry God has given me, to be the one of a success. Somebody seated here was talking to me recently on marriage. I won't mention his name or her name, so you don't know who I'm talking about. And she said to me, Oh! oh. Okay. Okay, I won't say it again. Okay, I won't say it again. Okay, okay, I won't say it again. Other than just to say that by the grace of God, I think as Brother Allah said in his review, at the end of this youth camp, we all want to return to basics. We all want to return to the old time gospel. We all want to return to the faith that was once delivered unto the saints, to we they are profited, and we too would like to make profit of, and eventually make heaven at last. Amen. I love you all. God bless you all. i
Satan, Satan clouds my mind, but Jesus stands to remind me that I'm a passing through instead of losing heaven. I must look to the day when there's no more dreaming. I'll be home at last. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, Jerusalem, Jerusalem. I've been dreaming of a city, Jerusalem, my home right up in the sky. How much trouble, all my troubles will be old. That's just a little while to go. I shall see him face to face, home right up in the sky. Dreaming of a city, very on the skies. When the suffering's over, I'll be I hope we are all looking forward to that um, city. We would like to consider together the word of God for this youth camp. And I would like to read from the book of 1 Kings, chapter 18, from verse 30. And Elijah said unto all the people, Come near unto me. And all the people came near unto him. And he repaired the altar of the Lord that was broken down. And Elijah took twelve stones, according to the numbers of the tribe of the sons of Jacob, Unto whom the Lord, sorry, unto whom the word of the Lord came, saying, Israel shall be thy name. And with the stones he built an altar in the name of the Lord. And he made a trench about the altar as great as would contain two measures of seed. And he put the wood in order and cut the bullock in pieces, and laid him on the wood, and said, Fill four barrels with water, and pour it on the burnt sacrifice, and on the wood. And he said, Do it the second time. And they did it the second time. And he said, Do it the third time. And they did it the third time. And the water ran about the altar and filled the trench with, also with water. And it came to pass, at the time of the offering of the evening sacrifice, that Elijah the prophet came near and said, Lord God of Abraham, Isaac, and of Israel, let it be known this day that thou God, that thou art God in Israel, and that I am thy servant, and that I have done all these things at thy word. Hear me, O Lord, hear me, that these people may know that thou art the Lord God, and that thou hast turned their heart back 
again. Amen. Then the fire of the Lord fell Amen. and consumed the burnt sacrifice Amen. and the wood and the stone and the dust and licked up the water that was in the trench. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, The Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. Amen. The Lord, He is the God. Amen. This was a situation. The children of Israel, at this point in time, they were in a state where they walked away from the faith of their fathers. They were in the situation where they've lost their ways. They, have they had decided to become an idolater. They were worshipping all manner of idol. Thank God for a man of God called Elijah. Yeah. Elijah stepped on the scene. And Elijah, out of zeal, prayed unto the Lord. Said, God, do something that will cause these people to return unto you. And he prayed, let there not be rain. For three years and a half. And you know what? God honored that prayer. Yeah. Yeah. We might look at it and say, was Elijah not wicked? Elijah wasn't. Elijah was only consumed with the zeal of the Lord. And Elijah had a burden for the people. You know, I couldn't but resist when Brother Isaac was sharing his testimony, the zeal and the burden is God for young people. I have had privilege of working with him in the last 15 years. And I can tell you, the burden that is got for young people, we can't measure it. But God will help us. Amen. That after these elders have gone, we will not, like the children of Israel, walk away Amen. from the faith of our fathers. Amen. And at this point, after three and a half years has gone by, Elijah came back and he said something to the children of Israel, which I would like to read in verse 21. And Elijah came unto all the people and said, How long will ye be between two opinions? If the Lord be God, follow him. And if Baal, then follow him. And the people answered him not a word. They couldn't make up their mind. They've lost their ways altogether. And at the more I think about this, and the more I think about where we've looked at here, in the Sunday school we talked about the covenants that had been broken, the covenant that had been restored. This is another case where God is actually calling them back to reestablish the covenant with them. And I think about what Elijah did here. And the response of the people is like telling them, friends, if I can call you that, and I can, brothers and sisters, let's go back to basics. Let's go back to the God of our fathers. And just the same way that God came down for Elijah when he built the altar, if today we will also build the altar of the Lord, in our heart it will come down. Yeah. It will send fire yeah. from heaven above into our bones, into our veins. You know, the more I think about this, the more I think about altars. What were they used for? They were used for sacrifices. The prophets of Baal set up their own altars. Elijah set up the altar of the Lord. 
not multiple halters, the halter of the Lord. We had 450 prophets of Baal, and they were there from morning up until evening, crying to their God. And Elijah even mocked them. He said, cry louder. Maybe he's asleep. Or maybe he's on a journey. Maybe he will hear you. And I think about that. And they were crying and they were cutting themselves. Hurting themselves. And yet, there was no answer. Because Baal was no God. Let's think about that. The halter is the place of worship. Today, we don't have physical altars made up where we burn sacrifices, but we have spiritual halters. We remember when Jesus met that woman at the well, and the woman was saying to Jesus, I perceive you are a prophet. Our father said we should worship on this mountain. You people say we should worship in Jerusalem. And Jesus responded. He said to the woman that the hour cometh when ye shall neither worship on this mountain nor yet at Jerusalem, but ye shall worship the Father. Because he said to them, ye worship what ye know not. And now Jesus was saying to them, he said, the hour cometh and now is it. When the true worshippers shall worship the Father in spirit and in truth. For the Father seeketh such to worship him. God is a spirit. And they that worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth. That is the word of God. So our altar today is our heart. That's where we truly worship God from. So we have spiritual altar. Since the time that Jesus died on the cross of Calvary, he established a new covenant. He established a new form of worship, which is a worship from the halters of our heart. You know, the state of our heart says a lot. As we are here, our faces are different. I can only see your face. We can make mistakes. You know, we can look at all of us the way we are dressed and presume we are saved. We can look at all of us the way we talk and presume, oh yes, he's on fire for the Lord. We can look at ourselves and say, because we do one thing or the other, we are Christians, and we worship God. But you know what? It's only God that knows the altar that you are worshiping at, and the one that I'm worshiping at. Is it truly the altar of God? Is it truly the altar dedicated to the Lord, or is it some other altars that we have set up? And the more I think about this, the more it dawned on me, and I think all through this, this youth camp, we've mentioned it, that the state of our heart has a lot to do with God. That what we, what we place premium on in our heart is the God that we truly worship. Let's think about that. And the more I think about this, the more I want to ask us this question. What is most important to you? What is the altar that you have set up in your heart. Many today worship at the altar of fashion. We want to be at the forefront of fashion. And nothing 
comes between us and that. My brothers and my sisters, you can be anything but if that fashion comes between your relationship and God. I'm sorry to say, you need to go back to the basis. Some of us worship in the altar of career. I didn't know Brother Isaac was going to share that. You know, if he had made his career that idol at the tip, at the point of becoming a professor, he could say, well, let the call just wait for a few more years. Let me get that thing I've been working for all through my life. I think about that. I, 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 and I look at people that work to become professors, that work to become academic. You know, the amount of papers they need to write, the amount of effort, the amount of sleepless night, even for you to obtain a PhD, for you to now get to that level that you are now an associate, you are close to it. And that's the point that God put his finger on it to say, now I want to see if truly you love me more than this. Think about it. What is that thing that if God puts his hand on in your life, you will struggle? That is the idol. That is the altar that you are worshipping on. To some of us, it's academic attainment. To some of us, it is wealth. To some of us, it is fame. To some of us, it is the approval of men. All these are, are, are altars that we have set up in our heart. Think about them. Which of these things is most important to you? I will read from Matthew chapter 6. Verses 24. Because there is something there that the Lord wants us to tie in with that. Matthew 6, from verse 24. No man can serve two masters, for either he will hate the one and love the other, or else he will hold to one and despise the order. Ye cannot serve God and mammon. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life, what ye shall eat, or what ye shall drink, nor yet for the body, what ye shall put on. Is not life more than meat? And the body more than raiment? Behold the fowls of the hair. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into bands. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon, in all his glory, was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the hoven, shall he not much more clothe you, O ye of little faith? Therefore take no thought, saying, what shall we eat? Or what shall we drink? Or 
where whither shall we be clothed? For all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father knoweth what ye have need of. Sorry, I'll take that. For your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of these things. The verse I'm going is this. And that's what we want to do. It says, seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things shall be added unto you. Theref- take therefore no thought for tomorrow. For the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. I want to ask us this question. What do we pursue? I think in the devotion of this morning, we did ask ourselves one question, that what do we spend most of our time on? Let's pause for a moment and meditate upon that. What do you spend most of your time on? Start thinking about those things. Are they gradually taking the place of God in your life? Are they gradually taking the place of God in my life? Let's consider these things together. God said we should not worry about what we eat. That does not mean we shouldn't work. God said we should not worry about what we put on. That does not mean we should go out without clothes. But God said he will take care of them. He said, let's go down to the foundation. Put me first. Set up that altar first. You see, all these other things you are pursuing. You know, I I will go back to that first program Saturday morning. Seeking the approval of men. And all the backslash that comes with it. That's why many people, even on their worship on the altar of success, when they just get this myriad of negative comments come through, they have no substance. They have no foundation. You hear many people committing suicide. May that not be our portion. Amen. Seeking the approval of men. You know what? Let's throw it into the wind. Let's care less what men think about us. Let's care more what God think about us. Because the moment we get that right, we are setting up the altar of the Lord. You know what? People will call you old-fashioned. Tell them you don't care. People will look at your dressing and say, come on, you're a young lady. Why are you dressing like a 50-year-old? You know what? It doesn't matter. There is this saying that says, the end justifies the means. If you take your stand, that you will worship on the altar of the Lord, you will keep your modesty, you will dress appropriately, you will be a representative of God on her, they will come back to you. They will come back to you. You will become a reference point. How many of us have seen that fashion is going the other way these days. People are now going back to old school dressing. Those old school was not immoral dressing. They now start wearing, you know, this long skirt that is sweeping on the floor. It's true. Sorry, I'm not trying to say, but that is true. You see that the the, the era where people were wearing short clothes are gradually fading out. People, their hairstyle is also going back to the old school. But if you take your stand, let the world of fashion go wherever they want to go, they will come back to meet you. Let the world of people pursuing this and that go all over where they want to go, they will come back to meet you. You just stand with God. When we pursue all the things of this world, the Bible tells us that what shall it profit a man? to gain the whole world and lose his own soul. Which one will you choose? 
How long will you and I, dilly darling, do a yo-yo? Stand up and down. If we are going to serve God, let us serve him. If we are not going to serve God, let us say we are not serving God. But I don't pray that any of us will make that decision. Our prayer is that all of us will make the decision to serve God and to stay with him. Because when we rebuild the altar of the Lord in our lives, things will begin to happen. The fire of God will fall. And that's what God wants for you and I. You know, when God gave us so much instruction in his word, he said, we should not worship other gods. You know, I looked at so many of them, even in the Old Testament, in the New Testament, is there everywhere. Psalm 81.9, thou shalt have no strange God. You know, Psalm, uh, uh, Luke 4, 8, and Jesus answered and said unto him, Satan, you know, get thee behind me. For it is written, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and only him shalt thou serve. Definite instruction, direct instructions, what God expects of you and I. Let's begin to think about the altars of the Lord. And the more I think about that altar, you know, I think about how do we set up this altar Most of us can tell us this, but I want to point out a few things. When we are praying for salvation and you are laying the foundation of those altars, that's when you start making your sacrifices. God will start putting his finger on things. That one, and that one, and that one, and this one. I don't know what they have for you. I knew what they were for me. When I was praying for salvation, God pointed his finger at specific things in my life and had to let them go. I used to worship on the altar of fame. I had no fame. All I was seeking after was to be famous and the approver of men. I was already in audition, you know, for soap on the national TV. I was already a national activist, you know, going out to meetings in the dead of the night thinking about how we are going to create problems for the university and for the government and for this and for that. But I knelt down and Jesus started putting his finger on them. I was making money, good money, but from deals. And the Lord said, well, you won't be able to do those deals anymore. Because there were things associated with those deals that were ungodly. I could argue my way out to say, but God, my path is godly. But God put his finger on it and said, Lord, you can have it. God will put his finger on things. You need to start making those sacrifices. When you are praying for sanctification, the Lord will still expect you to offer more. You want to set up the altar of the Lord? Be ready to make sacrifices. And by the time you are seeking for the baptism of the Holy Spirit, I think this is where the problem of some of us are. We are not ready to let go of everything. We are not ready to pour ourselves. We need to empty ourselves of ourselves. We need to get to the point where our own life will not matter to us anymore. That was the point I got to. I was living in a house where everything was being provided for me. Living with people who are in high rank in the society. But I had to say, God had to say to me, look, young man, if you want to serve me, you've got to come out. I moved out of that to a place where I was living on the campground. And I could just, it's a different lifestyle, but I was so happy about it. You need to make those sacrifices. It doesn't hang there. Even when you are saved, you are sanctified, you are filled with the Holy Spirit, if you don't continue to make those sacrifices, very soon those, the altar of the Lord in your life will become dilapidated. They will become dilapidated that in such a way that it will be broken down. You need to continue to use the altar. 
And that's what God wants you and I to do. Continually, continuously, every day, every moment, every hour, saying to the Lord, I am nothing. Just pouring it out there. I'm sure if Brother Isaac, sorry I had to use you a lot today because of that wonderful testimony which all of us should learn from. If he hadn't made those sacrifices a long time, 17 years ago, it wouldn't be easy for him. So you, don't, you can't just wake up in the morning one day and say, yes, Lord, here I am. Take me now and do what you want. No, 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 no. You've got to start from somewhere. And I will ad- encourage you to start from today. Yeah, yeah. Let today be the day. Yeah, yeah. Let us lose our lives for the Lord. Let us let it go for him. Let our lives be nothing to us before God. But you know why? God has a wonderful promise. Mark 20, 29 and 30. And Jesus answered and said, Verily, I say unto you, There is no man that had left house, or brethren, or sisters, or father, or mother, or wife, or children, or land for my sake, and the gospels. But he shall receive a hundredfold now in this time, houses, brethren, sisters, mothers, and children, and land with persecutions. So it's not just going to be easily thrown at you. There will be storms that will come with it. But you will be able to withstand the storm. Amen. Because you have made a sacrifice. Yeah. Because you have given your life to the Lord. Because you are saying it does not matter. All things work together for good. To them that love the Lord. To them that are called according to his purpose. God is able to do exceedingly abundant more than you can ever imagine in your life. Look at Brother Isaac's testimony. From a plumber to a professor. How does that work? It's only God. It can only be God. I don't know what your aspirations are. It means that if you follow God, God will take you there. He will do more than you can imagine. All he's asking you and I to do is to realign ourselves and rebuild that altar of the Lord. You know, just for us to finish off, there was a time that the children of Israel, they realized that they have done something wrong, that they've blown it, and they called on to Samuel, on to Mispeh. And when they got to Mispe, they said, Samuel, pray for us. Samuel, pray for us. And they decided on that day to say, we will serve the Lord. We will worship at his altar. And Samuel set up a, a, an altar there. And they prayed. And he took a kid. And he killed the kid. And he offered sacrifice unto the Lord. Even while the sacrifice was going on, the Philistines were coming. They were drawing near. As you are praying, the devil will come. He will draw near. He will try to convince you. He will try to scare you. He will try to tell you your knees are hurting. He will try to tell you get up and go to the toilet. He will try to tell you don't pray anymore. I tell you what, if you insist, if you carry on, if you determine, you will break through in the name of Jesus. Because that was what happened. Even to these Israelites, they carried on. They continued to pray. And as they were praying, God did something. And I love that. God did something for them. First Samuel chapter 7. From verse 10. And as Samuel offered, as, sorry, and as Samuel was offering up the burnt offering, the Philistines drew near to battle to battle Israel. But the Lord thundered with a great thunder on that day upon the Philistines and discomfited them. They were smitten before Israel. And the men of Israel went out of Mispe 
and pursued the Philistines and smote them until they came unto Betchka. Then Samuel took a stone and set it between Mispe and Shen and called the name of it Ebenezer, saying, Either two are the Lord helped us. Listen to this. Listen to this. I don't know what you're going through. I don't know what your challenge is. I don't know what the enemy is using to terrorize you. I don't know what those Philistines are that are pursuing you, that are standing in your way between you and God, between that altar of God, the one that is drawing you to that altar of idols. But today, just as it happened for the children of Israel, so these Philistines were subdued. So will all those things be subdued. And they came no more to the coast of Israel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines all the days of Samuel. And the hand of the Lord was against the Philistines. Today, I want to throw to us all as young people the same challenge that Elijah threw to the Israelites. How long will you think, meander, wander between two opinions? If the Lord is God, I beg you, serve him. I implore you. I can look back as a young person, one like you, over 23 years ago, about 24 years ago, this journey started for me. God has been faithful. He's taken me beyond places I can ever imagine. I'm still on my way, and I have every assurance. If I continue to worship on this altar of the Lord, He will take me there. Yeah. Will you join me in this race? Will you come to the altar of the Lord? Will you dedicate yourself to worship at this altar today? Rebuild the altar of God in your life and it will fix everything else. Rebuild the altar of God in your life and it will fix it. God bless you.
Oh, gracious Father, we thank you this afternoon. Lord Jesus, you are a wonderful God. Father God, we come unto your throne, Father, to talk to you. Lord, help us as we build that firm foundation of our altars. Father God, lead us as we, Lord, surrender all those things which can lead us behind. Father God, we want to move forward with you, Lord. We want to choose the way to perfection. Father, save us this afternoon. Father, sanctify. Father, baptize with the Holy Ghost in fire. Oh, Lord Jesus, you are a wonderful God. And we believe that, God, you are going to do something anew in our lives. Lord, do this and much more, for we pray in Jesus' name.